Hello everybody and welcome to episode 29 of This Old Knit. I am your host Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest. Um, you can find our group in Ravelry by searching This Old Knit. And um, I'm coming to you from the nook again. So the sun is actually starting to set. It's about 6, 6.30ish time frame. So I realized that, um, I'm gonna check on my phone really quick. It's about 6.30. Um, so I realized that probably for the rest of this year, my podcasts are gonna be a little bit difficult. The lighting is not gonna be good. Um, unless if I film on the weekends, which as we know, doesn't always happen. And when it does, it often happens around this time of day. So usually after um, we eat dinner, the kids will uh, will put on music. So if you hear stuff going on in the background, we either will play uh, Jonathan Colton, which we all really love. And if you haven't ever listened to him, you definitely should. He's a Canadian artist and um, he does kind of funny songs. Um, yeah, they're hilarious. So um, we enjoy him. And um, the other thing we've been doing is there's uh, just dance mixes where they've got like um, people, you know, I don't know how you do it. I think you screen capture, or screen capture, um, something like that. Um, the just dance game. So they're like pop songs and then they're video game characters doing the dances and the kids really love these video game characters doing the dances and they'll try to dance and stuff so it's great. So we usually do that for about an hour, hour and a half um, in the evening and um, my husband does it frequently throughout the day as well because they just really love to dance and they love music, both of our kids do. Um, so if you hear Megwin belting out in song downstairs, she was actually just singing Roar by Katy Perry <laughs> at the top of her lungs, and I could totally hear it up here. So anyway, I digress. Um, but that's what's going on downstairs right now is the Just Dance mix. Um, so yeah, that's typically what's going on when I'm filming my podcast. And I am drinking the um, autumn tea from uh, Trader Joe's. It's really good. It's exactly what you would expect, like a black tea with um, cinnamon and nutmeg and um, like some apple peel. Not sure what else is in there, but it's good. Um, I've been drinking coffee today um, when the weather turns. It's unfortunate because I like to drink hot beverages, but I can't have too much coffee or I start to feel um, a little bit jittery and since I'm still nursing as well I do have to kind of watch my caffeine intake just a little bit. Um, I drank coffee the whole time I was pregnant with Joshua so it really doesn't seem to affect him at all. He's still very easily able to go to sleep. Um, he's never had an issue but you know I don't know. I try not to drink more than like four cups a day. so. Um, at that point, it's more about me than him. So I do have a lamp plugged in, but I'm going to avoid turning it on as long as I can because I kind of have it pointed right at my face because um, I don't know how else to not have it kind of shining into the camera lens. Um, I don't have a very good like lighting set up with a diffusing thing or anything. But hey, you all know what you're getting when you come to this podcast. As Sarah from Love Stock Wool likes to say, this is way more ghetto than a lot of podcasts that you could go and watch. And those podcasts, more power to them, are the way more popular ones. So, like, Molly's podcast is very well produced. Kristen's um, podcast, uh, Yarngasm, to so Homespun House, Yarngasm. Um, I've been watching Tiny Paper Foxes, Jenny. Um, hers is also, I mean, amazingly produced. Um, Knitting X Pack Pat is also very well produced. Um, I actually just discovered the Pink Hair Girl podcast, so people have been talking about it, but I've just never had a chance to check it out. And um, I just love Sally Jane and her daughter. Um, Megwin really loves watching her daughter, who I think's name is Amelia. Um, 
but yeah, we've been enjoying catching up on kind of back episodes of that. So that's been fun. Um, but anyway, I do have show notes today, so I'm going to try to actually cover everything. Um, because despite it only having been a little bit less than a week, I have a lot to talk about. And let me just apologize up front as well. Hey, Jessica, <laughs> I'm apologizing again. I wrapped my advent package today and I, um, used this really cool wrapping paper that's like brown paper almost like a brown paper sack if you think of it that way with um printed gnomes on it which i love gnomes um or the other one was like three different types of owls and uh it's adorable so um, maybe i'll take a picture and uh, insert it at the end but uh regular scotch tape does not work on it at all it doesn't hold it it will just pop apart at the seams if you're trying to wrap stuff. So I have to actually use packing tape and packing tape like inevitably gets stuck on my fingernails. It kind of coils around. So it just ripped off my nail polish. So I will be redoing my nails before I go to work tomorrow. Maybe after the children are asleep because it's been a little bit of a trying day today. Um, so that could be a good way to unwind. Um, my husband and I have both been feeling really stressed today. <clears throat> um, so if I seem a little rambly, that's why. Uh, so just some administrative things to get out of the way in the beginning so I don't forget. I'm waiting for the sun to sink below the tree line and then I'll turn my light on. I might have to stop recording though and switch my... Um, I will have to do that. I'll have to stop recording and switch my camera to the um, other setting, the incandescent setting. It's not the incandescent setting. Oh my god, my brain today. Anyway, the artificial lighting setting, we'll leave it at that. It looks like a light bulb with little boop, 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 and you have to switch it to that. You're all screaming what the answer is out there. <laughs> Um, so the winner of the 300 subscriber giveaway was, um, I believe, number eight. Um, there were only 15 or 18 entries in it, um, so you had a really good chance of winning. So it was L M E C O L L, -M -E -C -O -L, -L who is Linda. Um, so Linda, please contact me and let me know which pattern you would like me to gift you um, of US $10 or less, and I will do that for your Ravelry. Um, and then I wanted to thank Sarah from the Love Sock Wool podcast. She mentioned uh, Megwin's sweater on her last podcast, not the most recent one that came out, but the one before that, um, and said that it was really pretty and it inspired her to put two squares on her sock yarn blanket side by side that were the two colors that I used in No Maker Suite. Um, so thank you. That was very flattering, Sarah. So thank you for mentioning that. And um, yeah, so let's jump into um, FOs first. So I did finish a, another pair of mittens and these are for Joshua. So I used the mitten pattern Another pair of mittens by Heather Mees, M-E-E-S, and it is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's a really basic pattern, but it's good. So I did it exactly as the pattern was written. I didn't change anything, um, and they fit him perfectly. They fit Joshua perfectly. So here they are. They're super cute. And I am going to stop my camera and... Um, do what I said what I was gonna do. Be right back. Okay everybody I'm back and yeah there's gonna be this weird little circle right here but it's the best I can do because the ceiling I can almost touch it with my fingers like this so it's a very shallow ceiling in my nook um, but at least it's not on my face <clears throat> and it won't be like I'm in a weird interrogation or something. Um, so yeah, I made these with uh, size 4 needles. They've got some stuff on them because he wore them to trick-or-treating at the zoo. And we also, um, the first day I made them, I finished them while he was napping. 
and he woke up and he put them on and then he went and got his shoes and he got his coat and he wanted to go outside really badly. So we went outside and just kind of walked around. It was kind of sprinkling a little bit, um, but it was sort of a perfect fall day. It wasn't super cold yet. It actually cooled down the next day. So that rain brought in the colder weather. Um, so he was picking stuff up and he and Meg when were climbing in and out of the pine tree and um, just having a great time. So um, anyway, they have like sticks and bits of detritus in them, but that's what I expected them to have because they're for a toddler and I've already had one toddler, so I know exactly what that means. Um, so this was just a leftover of something. My mom's knitting group, as I've said before, did a stash dive before um, the fiber festival two years ago and one person just had like a bag of random leftover balls from their projects. There was some Malabrigo, some Manos del Uruguay, um, some other unnamed stuff that I didn't know what it was. But I was like, ooh, that's enough to make like baby things. So making hats, mittens, socks, um, that kind of stuff. So I snatched it up and this is one of the balls. And I actually have enough to maybe knit a third mitten. So I probably will because these are so tiny that one is going to go missing. I know it will happen. Full size adult mittens go missing in my house. More on that later when I talk about the things that are coming up on my needles. But um, having three I think would be a good idea because then we'll always have at least two together probably. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah. Um, like I said size four needle. I didn't change anything about the pattern. They took me a couple hours maybe. I cast them on like the night before and I finished them in the morning of the next day. So they were great. They kept his hands super warm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like I've got a little bit of a weird throat thing. There go my show notes. A lot of junk on my lap right now because I don't have a table except for the one that the camera is sitting on in the nook and I desperately did not want to plastic ear you all because I know that that's really annoying and um, my microphone is not the best my onboard microphone for my camera so I try not to make those kinds of sounds as much as I can so I um, had a bunch of stuff that was in plastic bags, so I tried to take it out, but now I just have it all sitting on my lap. So, um, whips. So I'm still working on my 10 stitch blanket. I'm not gonna show it because I didn't actually work on it from the last time that I talked to you to now. I didn't knit on it at all. What I have been putting the most time in on is the willow cowl, which I think is in this bag. Like I said, I just kind of threw stuff together. Everything I might possibly want to talk about, I just threw it in this thing. And I also was, um, I have like that big wooden box that I've shown on earlier podcasts on my desk. And I think of it as my aspirational knitting. <laughs> So I bring things down from my upstairs where my stash lives, actually. I'll think of like, ooh, I'd like to work on that, or hmm, I wonder if that would be good for that project. And so I go and I get the yarn and I put it in the box, like I'm going to queue it up. <sighs> Often that doesn't work out. I'm sure I can't be the only one that does this. Um, I'll queue like 10 things. And I don't knit nearly as fast as I do inside my own mind. So I knit pretty, pretty quickly, but I don't have a lot of knitting time. So um, I still finish things fairly slowly because I don't get a lot of time to knit. On an average evening, I get maybe 30 minutes to knit, if that. Yeah, 15 to 30 minutes. And in the morning when I wake up, I get about 20 to 30 minutes to knit. 
Um, I get up earlier specifically so that I can do that. Um, my husband gets up at like 5.30 and he stretches and gets ready to go and exercise. He's dancing with them or he's running around. Um, and then I get up around 6 because usually Joshua wakes up and wants to nurse. So around 6 he's, got, he's gone back to sleep and um, I go out into the living room and while my husband is kind of stretching and stuff I will knit and we'll just kind of chat. Um, <clears throat> And then we wake Megwin up around 6.30 and we bring her out onto the couch and give her some time to wake up in the light. So all told, during the week, I get about an hour of knitting a day. And then on the weekend, I try to fit in as much knitting as I can because, um, because Joshua is still nursing, sometimes he will fall asleep on me for his nap. So I will have him on my lap and then I'll just knit above his head. So that's usually a, a guaranteed two hours in the middle of the day that I will get to knit. And then I kind of periodically like pick something up and knit a row and put it back down. Um, and then whenever we drive anywhere, I have my husband drive so that I can knit and then drive. Um, because the kids are buckled up and um, yeah, so I get a lot of knitting done in the car. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Blah. Willow cow. I've been working on my husband's willow cow. So here's the yarn, if you don't remember, because I didn't show it last time. It is the No Maker's Tweed in the Gnomesome Dove colorway. Uh, it is kind of olives and blues. Um, Harvest gold, tans, taupe, uh, cream. It's a really interesting colorway. And then it's Tweety, which I love. This is one of my more favorite colorways that Amanda does from No Makers. Um, it's just so unique. I haven't seen anything else with this particular combination of colors. So I am almost finished with this cowl, which I am so, so proud of myself about because it's almost time for him to wear it. So he's gonna get to have a new knitted thing for um, this winter, which is great. So I have heavily modified this pattern. Um, I'm using my Lighthouse stitch marker, which was came as a zipper pull on my Volenvine Yarns bag. And I don't have that project either, crap. Okay, there's a stink bug in the <laughs> windowsill. Outtakes! Okay, as long as it just stays there and kind of crawls around and stares at me, I'm cool with it. Um, so it starts out with, I did a folded hem, which I've shown, and I think I sh last time I showed it, it maybe had this, sorry, just this bottom section here. So since then, I've done all of this. And then this part, so I'm down to what my final stitch count will be now. So this is the top part. And I think I have maybe six more rounds and then I'm gonna do the uh, pearl ridge for doing my top folded hem because it has a folded, well, it has a pico edge at the bottom and the top, but obviously uh, my husband did not want a pico edge, although he wears mine and um, is fine with it, but we thought, uh, that's a little bit more stretchy, actually, a pico edge than a folded hem, so we thought this might work better. So for visuals, I will put it on, so you can understand kind of how it works. But, um, like I've said before, he, um, so this kind of flares out around your shoulders and it tucks in very nicely to a jacket. Now the original one has a lot of lace panels, so it kind of accordions down in a really cool way. Um, and I have one that was uh, gifted to me in a swap, an itty bitty knit swap a couple of years ago. Um, and my husband basically took it over, so it should, which is why I've offered to knit him one. Um, but it's very warm, so that one has lace. Like I said, it accordions down, and so it sits kind of almost like a necklace on your neck. But you can pull it up and have it warm you. 
Um, so this one is not going to accordion quite as much because it does not have the, the lace panels, but I think it's going to be warmer, which is what we were going for because my husband wants it for bushcrafting, which is like going out into the woods off trail with um, essentially a tarp. Um, he's made like a large oilcloth tarp. Um, and you tie it to trees in different configurations to make shelters and you have like a fire within your shelter and it gets really warm actually. I've gone out into his shelter. He does backyard camping with Megwin in this way all the time um, near the back of our property and I've sat in the shelter with him before and it gets quite warm like I feel comfortable in a t-shirt and jeans. So um, yeah, but obviously you have to hike to the place that you want to go, and then he also has to hike to get water um, to cup to bring back a boil to his camp um, and to go to the restroom, obviously. Um, so yeah, he's kind of gearing up to maybe try some winter stuff next year, uh, but this year I think he's just going to stick to doing it in the backyard for um, the winter, just in case if it's way too cold and he doesn't think he can handle it like he has the ability to come inside he's not gonna get frostbite <laughs> and lose a toe or something um, so one of the things that I like about this and I won't really talk <laughs> is once that hem is there you can actually pull it all the way up or this is probably not gonna work very well with my hair you can do this and just have your eyes and it is so warm so um, there's a couple different options with it and I wear mine like that when it's super cold so when we were having the polar vortex winter um, was that two years ago I think it was two years ago um, I often could be seen with mine as a hood and then up to here so I had my whole face covered and then I also did like a shawl around my neck to keep this part. I tried to basically have no exposed skin um, when it was like negative 30 Fahrenheit. Sorry. Although negative 40, interesting fact, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius are the same. That's where the two lines converge. Cool, huh? <laughs> Um, fun fact. So I'm excited about that. So I should be done with that either tonight or maybe tomorrow night. It depends on um, what the kids let me do because uh, probably by the time I'm done recording I will go down and I'll start kind of editing, picking some pictures to include, um, and doing stuff with the podcast just takes a little bit of time. And then it'll probably be time for like prepping for bed. I need to still make our granola bars for the week. So yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, not looking real good. Magic 8-Ball says prospects are not looking good. But yeah, I really, really like how it's turning out. And I'm knitting that on size US 6 needles. which is the same size needle I knit Megwin's sweater with. I had him um, hold that sweater over his face like a gauge swatch, and he said he liked how the fabric felt, so I went with that. Um, let's see other stuff on the needles. My mittens, the striped mittens according to Badagok. Um, haven't done anything on them. Still considering whether or not I need to rip back. I think I do. I need to rip back my decreases and just knit you know, like three or four more rows and then do the decreases again because I feel like oh I'm so close but it's a little bit too tight I want more finger room which I'm kicking myself about because I kind of knew I was starting my decreases too soon but I let myself be talked into listening to myself I should never listen to me I'm crazy this is all going to go falling. Okay. Gosh, have I knit on anything else? I don't think I have. That's kind of sad. I've been a monogamous knitter. <gasps> Ew, gross. 
<laughs> one nice thing though is that I mentioned last podcast that I was I didn't have any more US sixes to start the windswept shawl. And I remembered that my nitpicks interchangeables, I didn't have the sixes on anything, so I used those. I took my Addy Clicks off of the cowl and I now have a free US six to recast on the windswept. But I haven't done it yet. So that um, will probably happen a little bit later. After I do some other things. Um, so, whoa, see, I told you everything was going to fall. And it did. It did. Okay. Um, let's see. My vanilla latte socks I do not have. They're in the other room. I think I knit maybe one row on them, so not that interesting. My calligraphy cardigan, same thing. I maybe knit one or two rows, but it's just ribbing and it's like a big square, so it's not gonna look any different to all of you. Um, so, um, on my next up on the needles, uh, Megwin was walking to school one day with me and we were in a hurry to get out of the house so I forgot her mittens and it was pretty cold and her hands were feeling very cold and I had my foraging mittens on so I said okay sweetie why don't you just put on my mittens I will put my hands in my pockets and um, when you get home from school, bring my mittens back. Um, because they often make them wait in a line to go into the school, or they make them wait in a line like in right inside the doorway for the kindergartners. But all of the wind from the door is still coming in, so it's cold. So I didn't want to take them from her right when we first got to school. Um, my mistake. So I don't think two and two went together for my husband. He's used to looking for her hand knits and double checking that they are in her bag. If he knows that she has worn one of my shawls, he will make sure that the shawl comes home because as I've said, she's often wearing my um, shawl that I made out of Volan Vine yarns. Um, the name of the pattern is escaping me now. Um, but she really likes that one, so she wears that one all, most of the time. Um, but a couple days ago I said, oh hey, did she ever bring my mittens home and where did you put them to my husband? And he said, I didn't know she had your mittens. So um, long story short, we don't know what happened to them. Um, we had her check in her cubby at school. They were not there. She claims to have checked in the lost and found and they weren't there either. However, I think that there's probably more than one lost and found for the school. There's probably one for the classroom. And then I have seen one when we've had to go into the building that's kind of out in the hallway. So I think that one is kind of a more general, we found these mittens in the hallway or whatever. So I'm going to check that one. Um, on a different day or have my husband check it on another day when he goes to pick her up or when we drop her off and see if they're there but I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope so I think they're lost which bums me out because the yarn that I made mine out of um, was crazy for dyeing select sock I think in the superstar colorway but it was a discontinued base and a discontinued colorway so I will never be able to make the same mittens and I really really loved that color. I had been saving that skein for years for just the right thing and they were the most perfect mittens. They were beautiful. They matched my coat perfectly. I just loved them. I loved them. So it makes me really sad that they're gone. And I lost um, a hat last year in the winter time. Actually, two hats because I made one for Megwin out of um, Blue Sky Alpaca Surrey Merino in a cranberry colorway. And it was really beautiful. And um, she lost it when my husband and the kids went shopping. And he went back to every store that they went to 
looked in the lost and founds. He looked in all the parking lots all around where they had been and they could not find it. So I have to think that somebody must have picked it up. And someone somewhere has a beautiful cranberry colored blue sky alpaca surrey merino forest floor hat by Alana Dacos. And you're welcome because it was really nice. <laughs> And the other one was um, also an alpaca. It was um, the second yarn that I ever bought when I started knitting and I was waiting for something um, to come along and for me to feel like I was a good enough knitter to knit with it. Um, I also knitted a Lana Dacos pattern with that. I think it was um, some kind of leaves. It was in her first kind of pattern collection but not botanical knits. It was before botanical knits. Um, but you can see it on my project page. So we took it on a camping trip. I thought it was in the car and I have never found it. I don't know. It must have fallen out when we were either getting in and out of the car or what have you. I don't know. We were still taking our smaller Prius at the time so it, it was jam-packed whenever we went camping. Like it felt like we were playing Tetris to try to get everything in there. Um, so yeah, it's been kind of a bummer of a couple years for hand knits. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I am going to cast on a new pair of foraging mittens and I'm going to use my woolen vine yarns. So I'm going to use the Volca, which is in the Deck the Halls colorway. And I think this will be um, really pretty. It will go well with um, my windswept shawl because I'm using that really pretty cream color and I'm also going to knit a hat which the pattern oddly enough is called the Molly hat and it is by Erin Ruth it's a free pattern as well it's not on Ravelry it's on um, either her blog or something like that um, the only thing I don't like about it is that it's not charted so it's got a cable on one side and then it looks like it's mostly seed stitch otherwise but the cable's not charted not a huge fan of not charts but I can you know I can work from written directions and especially if it's not a very complicated cable I'm pretty good with cables I've done several cabled blankets so um, I pick up very quickly on cable patterns so I am using this yarn for that it calls for a worsted weight this is Fiber Spate's Scrumptious DK. Um, despite it saying a DK, it is listed as a worsted, and it absolutely is a worsted. It is a really thick single ply yarn. Um, I do not remember what the composition of it is. It feels a little bit sticky, and it's kind of got a sheen to it, so I'm going to guess there's probably some silk in there somewhere. Um, and I know there's some merino, but it's not a superwash blend at all. Um, but I think it'll make a very cozy hat. And I only have two knitted hats now. So I have my one um, bulky weight one, which is knit out of Madeline Tosh Home. Is that what it's called? Um, that Greg, who's Knitting Daddy, sent to me last year in the Rainbow Swap. And um, then I have one that my mom knit for me out of Classic Elite Kumara, which is a camel blend, and it is very warm. It's great. It's a beret, um, but it's a little bit shorter, so when it's really cold, um, I can't put it down over my ears, but I love it for just like fall time right now. I'm wearing it constantly, so that's kind of my fall spring hat, and then my um, Madeline Tosh is kind of my deep winter hat because it's really thick. It's that bulky yarn, but I'd like something to alternate. So I actually will have matchy-matchy knitted accessories, which is crazy. Knitters don't match. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited. Those will be really pretty. And then I also have a skein of, um, is it Handmaiden? God, I have my brain today. I'll link it in the show notes. It's a deep green yarn. It's a Canadian dyer and it's an MCN blend. So I was thinking I would make either um, an alternative hat, like a beret that's maybe a little bit lighter weight, 
or um, I could stripe it for something um, to pull things together. I don't know. But I thought that also be a nice um, other choice too. That thing is freaking me out. It's freaking me out. Okay, so that's kind of what's going to be next on the needles because now I need a pair of mittens. Or I'll finish my other mittens from Lena's pattern. That would be fine too. And then, um, as I mentioned, Megwin is constantly borrowing my shawl, so I am going to knit her a shawl of her own. Um, she's been asking me for one for a while, and she has clearly proven that she loves shawls, and she has been taking good care of it and making sure that it, she always knows where it is, and she has not lost it, so um, she's done really well this year with hats. Like, this year she hasn't lost any hats. She hasn't lost mittens. My mittens are the first ones that she has lost. And I think it's just because that was outside of her normal routine. Like, those aren't normally a, a thing she would have had with her. So it's understandable that she wouldn't even think about them. I mean, she's five. I think I have too high of expectations sometimes of five-year-olds. Thus, the stress that has been the last few days. Although yesterday was wonderful. It really was. We had a great time. Um, so Sarah from Love Sock Wool Podcast inspired me and pointed me in the direction of a pattern I did not really consider before. So she recently knit a boneyard shawl by Stephen West. I think she used uh, maybe woolen vine yarns? Um, but I think I've also seen her use hedgehog fibers for one of them. I kind of caught up on all of her episodes recently. So, um, anyway, I am going to use Knit Picks Chroma, which again is, it's a uh, fingering weight yarn. It's 70% wool, 30% nylon, 396 yards. It's not a super wash. It's just a hand wash. It's single, it's single. Um, I have knit a sweater out of it, which I think I called the Guppy sweater. I used the Guppy colorway with a wool Angora blend as my a striped um, the Grace cardigan. Yeah. Um, anyway, I did stripes. I've worn it on an earlier podcast, um, and it's held up really well. And I think if it holds up in like a sweater, it's going to be fine in a shawl. So this colorway is Buttermint, and it's beautiful. It's um, pastels, pink and peach going into yellow, and then green and um, kind of this minty bluish green. I really love the peach. I love that peach so much. That pink into peach is just my favorite part of the transition. And it's soft and pretty, and it just reminds me of Megwin. It's very her. She was super excited when she saw it. She was like, oh, it's going to be so pretty, Mommy. And I think it'll actually go really well with her little bunny Fufu mittens. So I have two skeins of it because I initially was thinking I was going to knit another striped sweater for me and um, stripe it with my pink alpaca as a solid stripe. I love to do a variegated stripe with a solid yarn as the other stripe. But one, I figured out my pink is a DK weight, not fingering. And this is a pretty light fingering. If you've never used Chroma before, it's very light fingering. Um, so pretty different weights. And two, I decided I was going to use that pink for my campsite shawl. So I am not going to have it available to a sweater. So, a shawl it is for my Megwin. And I think she's going to really love it. And I'm just going to knit it as big as I want and then we can kind of share it. So I can use it sometimes and she can use it sometimes and we'll both be happy. So, yeah. That will happen sometime before Christmas. I don't know. I don't know when it'll happen. I'm kind of all over the place despite my show notes. Let me double check my camera really quickly. Yep, it's recording. Um, so, up 
update on my tree craft. Sorry. If you'll recall last time, I showed you the unmitigated disaster that was my tree idea. It went a lot better this time. So I got a different glue and I tried again. I got a new cone. This time I got a green cone. They didn't have the white, but the green I think actually worked a little bit better because it doesn't show through. So that's how it turned out. So I think it turned out really well. Um, this is just some patterns, worsted weight wool in like a foresty green. I don't know, I had it as a leftover. So um, it was fine. I didn't, I wasn't planning on using it for anything else. So I figured, hey, let's make trees. Um, I still have to secure this end. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet because I probably will put a base on there of felt or something. So I'll just kind of tack that underneath. So what I used is Aline's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. Um, yeah, it was fine. The bottle's kind of hard to use. It made my hand hurt kind of squeezing it. So I, what I did is I just like squeezed on the top and then I used a little plastic spatula to spread it. And then I very slowly coiled the yarn around and around and around. Um, and then I do a little bit more because I didn't want to get glue all over my hands. And then the bottom part, I could actually flip it around because it had been long enough. It took me about 30 minutes to wrap this tree at least. Um, but I could flip it around and do this part or hold this part while I did the bottom. Um, I think Megan was working on um, a craft. She's been um, watching Cool School on YouTube, there's a person called Crafty Carol, and she does different crafts that are kind of fun, um, easy stuff for kids, and she has this really funny way of speaking. She'll be like, I'm not trying to make the best thing in the world, I'm just trying to make it good enough, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be the prettiest thing in the world. So Megan was just going on and on, like, doing a Crafty Carol impression. It was hilarious. Um, so, once she has decided that she's going to be doing better because <laughs> she um, has had some temper issues today which of course I had to look up on the internet so that I didn't feel like the worst parent ever but it seems that it's very normal and that defiance in five-year-olds is a sign that you're doing a good job as a parent but oh my god it's crazy it makes you feel like oh it makes me feel like I shouldn't um, say more generally to others like I've done a poor job and then I did something wrong because um, she just has such a temper oh my god so like if things do not go her way she just explodes and it's crazy um, and then you'll tell her to do something and she'll be like no I'm not gonna do it and I know that's normal she's testing boundaries but oh my god crazy so I digress when we're having a better time in the house, which will probably be tomorrow, um, we will put ornaments on this together. I sent the rest of my itty bitty advent swap package out today, so I fingers crossed that my swap partner likes it. I am so, so nervous about it. Um, but I have a couple more things that are coming because um, I ordered some stuff. So I ordered a skein of Hedgehog Fibers yarn and I ordered a mini skein bundle from um, no makers of course because it's coming from me so how could I not include no makers so I got the milk and cookies one with the little no me cookie cutter but um, Amanda said she is not to not expect your order for um, six to eight weeks that she's just not gonna pressure herself and absolutely fine Amanda I understand completely and um, that is near the end so I'm actually using it for my day before no it's several days before Christmas Day but it's my free choice it's the U letter so I have lots of time it'll be at the tail end of just December um, and I can express mail it it's just gonna be you know not very big of a box so anyway we found we've got some cool buttons so I'm not gonna use the tree one on a tree obviously but I thought a couple of the snowflakes might be fun to use maybe the pine cones could be fun and there's a little cardinal in there which the 
cardinals are the state bird of Ohio and we also have cardinals that live in our yard so they're pretty special to us. Um, then there were these tiny candy canes. So we'll put some of those on. And then some gingerbreads. I'm sorry for the crinkling, I'm trying not to crinkle. So there's some stars, some gingerbread men, and some little houses, but I don't think I'll put the houses on there. Those are kind of big. I knew it was going to cut me off at some point. <laughs> that's good. That means I'm about at my right time. When I know that I am getting cut off, that's usually when I'm starting to kind of get to the end of my list of stuff, and that's exactly where I am. So um, these are little Christmas lights, and they've got a button thing on the top. So I think what I'm going to do is take the um, the gold uh, DMC floss, like for cross stitch that I have, because I have some for, uh, I bought it for a holiday sampler, and then I got some kind of nicer floss from um, one of my friends, but I still have this gold that I can use. So I'm going to use it to string these on like a garland, and then I think if I like tie a little knot around each one I could put a straight pin into the knot and actually like hold it in place on the tree because I want it to spiral down and get some even coverage of the lights and if I just hang them freely on the string they won't stay where they're supposed to stay they'll just get all over the place so I have two packages of those And then the last thing, I have these stars. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, like a little um, cardboard cone to put on the top. Kind of like you have a tree topper, right? Because, I mean, our tree topper at least has like a little cone that lets you sit it on the top of the tree. So that way I can cover up the little thing. And then the my swap partner will be able to remove that when they go to put the tree away for the year and they won't have to worry about like knocking the star off and then I will put that star on that little cone so that'll be my topper so that's kind of my idea this is for my L which is something that lights up it doesn't actually light up but it's gonna have Christmas lights on it and a tree is a Christmas tree is something that lights up um, yeah, I'm trying to be creative here. So that's all my stuff for that. Uh, but I'm happy with how this one turned out. I'm going to make one for us too. I have a second cone that Megwin and I will work on. And I think I have enough of that yarn left to even um, use that yarn, which is great. So, um, let's see what I've forgotten. Because I'm sure I've forgotten something. Um, yeah, so, uh, on Instagram, I shared my, uh, Westershire Spinners Christmas yarn, which I think came after my last podcast, so I will share it now. Acquisitions. I was thinking I had it, but I don't think I did. Um, so I ordered the Christmas colors from West Yorkshire Spinners, and they just came, um, a couple days ago. So one uh, is like a self-striping fair isle pattern, a faux fair isle pattern with olive green, dark green, and red. And then they had a coordinating solid that they were selling. I think this colorway is called Cherry Drop. I can't remember what this one is called. Um, and it doesn't say it on the label. It only says it on their website. Uh, so they are a 75% wool, 25% nylon blend that has 35% BFL. So it definitely feels like a BFL. Um, it's a little bit thinner of a sock yarn. So I actually have ordered a second Carbons needle to match the one that Molly sent me in um, a package of like I won a skein of yarn from her podcast uh, several months ago now and she included some other fun surprises. One of the things was a 2.5 millimeter carbons. 
So I am ordering a second one now, and I think I will work these on 2.5 millimeter needles. So um, a couple of other people commented on uh, my Instagram post and said, oh, I got the same colorway. I really, really want to knit Christmas socks so bad. And I was like, I know, I totally do too. I was going to use them for the Christmas Eve cast on um, that Little Bobbins does, but I don't think I can wait that long. I think I'll probably just pick out some other sock yarn in my stash that, um, that I want to make for myself. So Love Sock Wool. Comadres and Amanda May 83 on um, that's her Ravelry name. Um, I think it's Amanda May Knits on Instagram. All Amanda May is she's thinking about it. Um, but uh, Love Sock Love Sock Wool and Comadres both said they would like to do an informal cow with their West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas yarn to make some fun Christmas socks. So if anybody else wants to participate, I'll just open up a thread and we can chat about them. Um, I don't think I'll probably do any prizes, but um, at least we can have fun knitting our Christmas socks together. So I thought that was fun. Um, and then uh, we went to Boo at the Zoo yesterday. So it's like trick or treating at our zoo. And then they give the animals enrichment activities that have like pumpkins or um, like little hide and seek things and stuff like that. Um, so I got some pretty good pictures. Megan was Gandalf and Joshua was the Hobbit. He was Bilbo because we're reading the Hobbit right now. And um, I borrowed a costume for, that one of my friends had made for um, their son last year. And it was so cute. He had a cloak. He had a waistcoat. He had little breeches and a shirt. Um, he was adorable. And uh, I didn't get very many pictures of Megwin because we met uh, one of her friends at the zoo and they basically just ran around like crazy together all day. So it was really, really hard to get pictures of them, but she had a great time. So I didn't mind at all. I'm sure I can get some other pictures of her in her costume at some point. Um, so the last thing I wanted to share is we've, I've talked about sharing recipes on the podcast before. And some people said that they would be interested because I mentioned that I'm a vegetarian um, and my, my husband eats vegetarian as well now, um, partly because of his uh, gout. He now is a more, I wouldn't say militant, but more uh, he adheres to a vegetarian diet because before he would just be like, yeah, whatever, I'll just eat meat sometimes, but he can't, he cannot anymore um, because it will make it flare up. Which works out for me. So like we, when we went to my mom's, for example, nobody else in our family is vegetarian. So we'd just be like, yeah, fine. We'll just eat whatever it is. Um, but now we're just kind of bringing stuff, which is fine. So one of the cookbooks that we use all the time, and it's pretty kind of gross on the cover, which says that you're using a cookbook, right? If a cookbook looks beautiful, probably not using it. So we... <laughs> she's probably looking for pajamas because I'm upstairs um, but I heard my husband say I told you to go downstairs because none of her clothes are up here right now um, so we use the Smitten Kitchen cookbook quite a bit by Deb Perlman she has a blog as well with a lot of free recipes but um, she's put out a second cookbook now which I have not bought yet but I would like to I need to put it on my wish list for Christmas We've used this a ton. You can see we have a lot of bookmarks for things that we use on a regular basis. So just some of the stuff we make regularly out of this is, um, we just had stuff tonight actually. We make these squash tacos, spaghetti squash tacos. So you make spaghetti squash and then you add um, like lime juice, um, chili powder, cumin, coriander, uh, you put black beans on them, queso fresco or cotija, which actually, unfortunately right now, um, you can't get queso fresco or cotija. Um, I went to Whole Foods, which is usually where we find it, and I asked the cheesemonger, 
And he said, yeah, no, you can't get it anywhere because there's one place that exports it out of Mexico and um, they've had a listeria outbreak. So he said he had to destroy all of it and he hasn't had any in like two months. So, um, yeah, that was a huge bummer. I don't know if I've shared on the podcast before or not, but I was an exchange student in Mexico before. Um, so that's why when I pronounce um, Spanish words, I just, I say them the right way um, because I'm fluent in Spanish. So um, I did not know any Spanish before I went to Mexico. I lived in Mazatlan um, in the state of Sinaloa and kind of traveled all over Mexico while I was there. I did a lot of travel by bus because it's very affordable and um, you can get to a lot of places and there was a group of us there. Um, so yeah, I met um, some people actually from Berlin. Um, two of my friends that were there were from Berlin and um, there was a student named Ingeborg who was from Austria. Um, Greet was from Belgium. There were a couple of Americans, but um, actually two of them went home early and then one consistently stayed, but she very much kind of stayed speaking English all the time. So she didn't really learn Spanish um, because she didn't immerse herself. So I um, tried to only speak Spanish. Even if I didn't know very much, I every night would like do these flashcards. I watched TV in Spanish. I watched a lot of cartoons, so I actually learned how to speak Spanish from the Cartoon Network. And you're gonna stay here at the door. Tell you what, stand at the door. Oh boy. So that you keep Bubba safe and don't let him down. You hear my voice. There's crazy things going on down there. So. Long story short, how did I get on that? Mexican cheese. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was like, do you have Oaxaca? And he's like, no, nothing. No cotija, no queso fresco, no cotija, or no Oaxaca, nothing. Uh, <laughs> so it's a bummer. But, uh, we just used Mexican shreds, which he said, I hate to tell you to use that, but it actually is a pretty good flavor profile similarity. This is kind of what they'll look like. We've also made, there's like a butternut squash galette. So we've made this before. It's quite easy. It doesn't look like it's easy, but it is. We've made a black bean ragu. It's a slow cooker recipe. So you basically just like slow cooker black beans with a bunch of spices and um, then we have them on toast. So I often will make like a homemade bread recipe. I make a focaccia recipe fairly regularly and then we'll have it with like avocado on the side and stuff. So that's really good as well. Just in case you wondered what do vegetarians eat? Because people ask me that all the time. Which I think it's hilarious. People at work will ask me that all the time. What do you eat? Like salads all day? No, I don't eat salads all day. I think it's funny that pe that's all people can come up with that I might eat around here. Um, and then this is my aspirational birthday cake because I love s'mores so much. And this is a s'more layer cake. Oh yeah. It has like a marshmallowy frosting and she even took like her little creme brulee torch and toasted the top to make it be like toasted marshmallow. It has like a chocolate um, ganache in the middle. And then it's like a graham cracker flavored uh, kind of spice cake. That sounds so amazing. Maybe I'll have it this year because I'll be 38 and I can have what I want for my birthday. Um, yeah, so there's desserts in the back. It's kind of set up like I think a lot of cookbooks are that you've got, you know, your main courses. She does have a section in here that's for meat, but um, actually a lot of the recipes are adaptable to not use with meat. 
so um, it's a really approachable cookbook. I like her cooking style. If you want to uh, check it out before you invest in a book, um, like I said, just go to her blog. It's the it's uh, smitt smittenkitchen.com. And uh, she has a lot of great recipes. I highly recommend the chocolate stout cake. That is the one I take to every single work event that I have. Um, people love it. And it's this deep, rich chocolate flavor, but it's very complex because you actually put chocolate stout in it. So it's delicious and it has kind of a bitter, bittersweet um, drizzle of chocolate on the top that you put coffee in. So, ugh, it's to die for. So anyway, yep, Sweet and Kitchen Cookbook by Deb Perlman. And that is one of the main uh, books that we use all the time. So that's kind of all that I have to talk about. And I feel like I have talked a lot and I haven't shared a lot of knitting this week. But um, thanks for coming and sharing your time with me. Um, it feels really good to talk to you guys, even if you're not here talking back. Uh, like I said, I kind of had a hard day today. Um, just make one was a little bit challenging. So I appreciate you all coming and spending some time with me and helping me alleviate my stress by talking about knitting and other fun stuff that I like to do because crafting is my outlet for goodness. So, yep, I will see you all next week. Please feel free to PM me or leave a message on the episode thread or in the what would you like to see thread if you have any questions for me. And I will talk to you next week. All right. Bye. Okay, shall I introduce you? Um, yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. We're doing Meglin's segment this week, and she needs to read her book that she created at school to at least five people. So we thought that she would read it to the podcast, which is over 300 people. She's an overachiever. So for your enjoyment, I bring to you Meglin's pumpkin book. All right, take it away, Meglin. I see one red, red pumpkin, but it's really boring because I have to write the number. Sheesh! Okay, what's the next page? Well, pretty much, I see two purple pumpkins. And, ugh, purple pumpkins aren't real. That's true. Except if you decorate them with paper. That's right. So that's the real thing of purple pumpkins. Mm-hmm. If you decorate them with pumpkins, but, you, you can know, paint them purple. Yeah, you can paint them. But Any you color you want. Okay, hold it so they can see it. You can food color them, which is... This is okay, now you can three read gray it. pumpkins, mm -hmm. and it's very boring to write down a mark. You Jeez. like writing numbers. But it's, it's a beautiful a, three. But, it, but it's very boring. A little bit, but not mm -hmm. too much. And, green, and pumpkins now are Now you green. need to read the page. That's part of your assignment. I see four green pumpkins and... Green pumpkins are green before they even grow. That's right. They're green before they're ripe. Mm -hmm. They don't rock too much because it's making a weird sound. And, then, okay. and when they get rot, they're brown. And this is, of course, I see five brown pumpkins. Good. Okay. And, and the rocking chair is very comfortable, you know. Nice. What's your next page? Keep going. Sit up. Keep going. Um, people, settle down. <laughs> All right, keep going. <laughs> I think they'll think that's hilarious. I'll probably think it's funny. Keep going. We got to get through it. And also, I think this one will interest you. Yellow pumpkins. What's the page say? I see six yellow pumpkins. Uh -uh. That's a lot of pumpkins. That is a lot of pumpkins. But there's a ten pumpkins. Okay. Yeah, we got to keep going if we want to get there. <laughs> Uh, whoever thinks blue pumpkins are healthy. Probably not. Okay, what's this page say? I see seven blue pumpkins. Good. I like it. And I can read. It's awesome. I, I love your reading. I can read, everyone. All right, let's keep going. Show them. I see 
Hey, who's dressed as a pink pumpkin healthy? Okay, keep going. No one. I see, I see eight pink pumpkins. Good. Who chose the pink pumpkin real? <laughs> Painting it. Painting it, yeah. Whoopsie! You probably would like pink pumpkins because you like pink. <laughs> The one before the last one. I see nine black pumpkins, which is very black. Spooky. Ooh. All right, last page. <laughs> Come on. That's crazy. You're going to run out of time to share. <laughs> and here are my orange pumpkins. Finally, the color pumpkins really are. And what does that one say? I see ten orange pumpkins. And that's it. That's good. Thank you for sharing that wonderful book. All right, and what else do you have with us to share with us today? My shoes. Okay. Now here's one of my sparkle shoes. It's a, it's a flip. It's a sandal sparkle shoe. Isn't it so pretty? It's pink, my favorite color. And it's, they're so pretty, the sparkles. Awesome. I think they liked it. I think so. What's the other set you've got? <laughs> Now these shoes, Good. they're, they're butterfly and they're pink and white on the bottom. Mm -hmm. See? Great. They're called flip flops. That's right. And what's the last thing you have to show there? It's not the last thing. Well, it probably should be the last thing so I can get this uploaded today so people can see your segment. I'm going to show my toys, one toy next. Okay. That's the last thing. Okay. Here's my hat, and of course the person who gave it to me is watching right now. That's right. Her name is Jessica. Jessica's watching the podcast right now. I'm sure she likes it. I'm sure that she knows I like that my hat, but I'm going to tell her on the podcast. Okay. That would Jessica, be great. Jessica, I like my hat. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. I love you, Jessica. <laughs> I, I do that all the time to the people I love. Yeah. Maybe not all the time, just sometimes. Okay. Yeah, she Pretty. sent us lots of nice things last Christmas. <laughs> she made your birthday cake, your knitted birthday cake that you play with sometimes. <laughs> now there's snowflakes on it and it's rainbow, my favorite color. Uh -huh. And it's why in these buds. I like them a lot. There's three of them. See? One, two, three. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to go get a toy now. I'll be right back. Okay. Be right back, podcast watchers. All right. I'll, I'll hold down the fork. <laughs> Although now it's pointed down for you, so it's probably like my lap. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, everyone, I'm back. Okay. I'm glad I made it, everyone. <laughs> All right, let's show that last thing, and then we'll go upload it so people can see it. All right, what do you got to show? Now, us? this is my favorite horse of all. It's white with black spots. Actually, it's black. See their black lips? Oh, that's how you know it's black with white. It's black with white. Because, see? Mm hmm. And has. A, a, a black and gray tail, good hooves, and I like it because of that. Awesome. Okay, right. bye everyone. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoy my podcast, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs>